What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for an international roundup where we're going to have a look at the internationals over the weekend and see how each and every Spurs player have got on on their respective international duties. And we're going to start off with Mali against Chad, where it did finish 3-1 to Mali in their first World Cup qualifier. However, Yves Bissouma was an unused substitute on the day, which is very peculiar. I'm not sure why. I think if I remember rightly, I think it might have been last season um, we did an international roundup as well. There was a game where he wasn't picked. But, I, I, mean, I mean, look at their central midfield. I mean, I know Decore is a very good player. Kamara is a good player. but Yeah, but in that international round uh, break that you're talking about where he wasn't picked, he actually was carrying an injury. That's mm. why he didn't play that time. So, so I'm not sure. Still, I don't know. Let's hope I, not. I, hope, I mean, I hope that's not the case. Maybe he's not in good form, which he's not been playing that well, obviously, last couple of games. But you would have thought that's not enough considering how he's played the majority of the season to keep him out of a team uh, like Mali. But to be fair, they do have some good central midfield options um, in Decore and um, uh, Kamara from Monaco. I mean, it's, I, I mean, considering how he's been playing the majority of the season, I can't really put my finger on why he wasn't picked at all, but didn't even come off the bench. The only, the only reason I can think of is maybe he had a slight knock, mm. uh, which we haven't heard of yet. Yeah, they do play again tonight, so we'll see more uh, if he plays tonight or not. But uh, let's move on to the next international game. And that is Denmark 2, Slovenia 1. And Denmark have qualified for the Euros. pierre Emil Hojbjerg playing 90 minutes. Five out of his six long ball was successful. Two out of his three dribbles was successful. Four out of his nine ground duels won. One out of his one aerial duels won. And one tackle on the day as well, which was a successful day for Denmark playing. I think they were second in the group, Slovenia. So it was a fairly big game. Uh, but Denmark is safe into the Euros. Yeah, fan good news for them. And obviously they did fantastic at the last Euros, getting to the semi-final. Hojbjerg was a massive part of that as well mm. um, uh, back in Euro 20, uh, Euro 2020. So I'm very happy for him. Uh, he always performs at the international level, doesn't he? He's always a massive player for Denmark. And hopefully, you know, he's going to be getting his chances over the next few games, isn't he, for Spurs? We yeah. know that. So hopefully he takes them. Yeah. Uh, next up, Italy 5, North Macedonia 2, which sets up an unbelievable tie tonight against Ukraine, where basically winner takes all, winner goes through to the Euros. They're locked on second and third on the same amount of points. So if it's a draw, Italy do go through on goal difference, but um, it, it does set up an unbelievable game tonight, which I'll be really interesting to watch. Uh, but Vicario did pull out through illness, so he didn't play, and Destiny Adoji obviously pulled out the squad through injury, so no Spurs players. Um, but you excited to watch that game tonight? Probably more excited than England game <laughs> yeah, tonight. I definitely think, <laughs> considering the England Malta game, I definitely think this. Uh, I'll probably be watching Italy tonight for sure. That should be it's a mouth-watering clash. Um, and I think Italy as well, a lot of pressure on them to make it because they obviously didn't make the World Cup um, after winning the Euros. So if they miss two tournaments in a row, that'll be massive for mm. a team like Italy, especially after winning the Euros. Whatever, whatever happened to the holders getting automatic qualification? Did they stop that? Not When did they stop that? Was it hold, uh, the hosts do? do the holders? It used to be the hosts yeah, and right. the holders. But was that was that always for the Euros as well? Just the World Cup? I know it's the World Cup. That's mm, definitely maybe, the maybe it was just the World Cup. Maybe I'm not was, sure. I can't remember. Um, so very peculiar. But it's in Ukraine. So definitely no guarantees that Italy win that game. Yeah. Uh, you know, the crowd will be right behind them. Well, you say it's it. in Ukraine, but it's actually in Germany. It's in Germany, is it? Oh, because they can't play in Ukraine at the moment. Okay, so maybe the crowd. Right <laughs> well, the crowd should be right behind the silver. Look, when you've got Mudrik on your team, anything's possible, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, next up, Armenia 1, Wales 1, where Wales still have an outside chance of qualifying for the Euros. They do have a tricky tie against Turkey, and they need to hope that Croatia do slip up against Armenia. So mm. it is a bit. Um, it's a bit far-fetched to see maybe Wales qualifying, but stranger things have happened. In in this game specifically, Ben Davis, captain the side, played 90 minutes, two interceptions, three tackles, two out of his five long balls successful, four out of his four ground duels, and two out of five aerial duels won. Brennan Johnson also made an appearance in this game, coming off the bench in the second half to get some minutes in his legs. So good to see the boys uh, get some action. Yeah, I wonder why he didn't start. Uh, you would have thought he would have... He's, I was looking at their front up options. I think they played Kiefer Moore... I think it was David Brooks and maybe Harry Wilson. I'm like, how's he not getting in that front yeah, three? Weird one, isn't it? Um, especially with his pace. I'm looking at it, there's no pace in that front line anyway, but a uh, bit, bit, bit peculiar. Maybe it's why they drew. But, Keep, um, Kiefer Moore, no, no pace now? No, no, no pace, not enough pace. <laughs> yeah, he's a uh, lightning quick Kiefer Moore, I should have said. Um, but yeah, uh, 
well, Wales beat. I remember Wales beat Turkey in the Euros, didn't they? A mm. few years that was when in Euro twenty twenty. So they beat them. That's probably their most recent meeting, apart from the first yeah. meeting in the group. I think it could be likely that Wales beat Turkey, but for Croatia to slip up against Armenia in this kind of pivotal game, I just can't see it. Are they are they hoping to overtake Croatia then? Yeah. Who's already through? Who are already? Who are already? Is it Turkey? Uh, no, I'll tell you in a second. But uh, carry on what you were saying. I'll just yeah, have so a they beat. I remember they. But I remember Bale had a brilliant game in the, against Turkey. Do you remember it was the opening game of the year. Yeah, I remember the opening game. He was brilliant in that game. So they're not going to have him uh, in that one. So, so yeah, Turkey are already through. So okay. Croatia are on thirteen points. Wales are on eleven points. And and, and Armenia are at the bottom. Armenia are on eight points. And Croatia home or away. Croatia are Croatia are at home to Armenia. Yeah, not going to happen. Unlikely. And Wales are also at home. And Croatia, you know, they do so well at tournaments, don't they? Go, go give them credit. It's yeah. Such a small nation. They yeah. always do so well. At They've got some great players. And Luka Modric still at the heart of things. Yeah, you reckon he's going to be in another tournament? Like, I yeah, reckon. Why Probably. Not? Look, yeah, this yeah. surely he's got to be his last yeah. tournament. No, I don't. Why wouldn't he be at the tournament? He still yeah. plays for Madrid. So yeah. why wouldn't he be? Yeah. Next up is Senegal 4, South Sudan nil in their first opening uh, World Cup qualifying game. Pape Matassar started the game and scored after the opening, after the first minute of the game for his first goal for Senegal. And it was actually a really nice goal, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't I know if you it. saw it. Uh, beating a couple of players and with a nice little um, one across the floor hitting the bottom corner. I thought it was a really nice goal for Pape. Yeah, he likes that shot. Um, mm. I, I find if for Tottenham, when he gets in those positions, he, he likes to try a daisy cutter along the floor into the corner. That's the word I was looking for. Daisy cutter, <laughs> yeah. Um, he, he obviously, this one landed into the uh, into the far post, but more often than not, he's only got, what, one goal for Tottenham this season. Albeit, he does get in a lot of shooting positions and like he does get a few shots on target per game, usually uh, usually one or two. So he does like to get in those positions. So really great to see him on the score sheet, bring his uh, club form into his country and, um, you know, really... Be becoming one of the star, uh, mainstays in that team now. Really yeah, good. it was it was really nice to see the star boy opening his mark for for Senegal. That's for sure. Next up, Netherlands one, Republic of Ireland nil. Poor campaign for Ireland as they finished their Euros qualifiers now and they finished second bottom of the group, so they won't be at the Euros. Troy Parrott did come on for the final minute of the game, but nothing much to see there. Is that Matt Doherty wearing the number ten shirt? I'm looking at. Yeah, he's actually been wearing the number ten for a while now for Ireland. Well, that's their problem. <laughs> you, got, you got Matt Doherty wearing the number ten, and he's like your creative hub. I think you got big issues there. Yeah, um, I think a big miss for them was obviously Evan Ferguson, who pulled out the squad through injury. Um, but yeah, nothing yeah, really you, say. Shame about Ireland not qualifying. I mean, Evan Ferguson's a big miss, but you shouldn't be relying on an 18 year old. You know what I mean? When That's you're very a whole true. Country, you know very I mean? true. Um, so no big shock they're not going to be at the Euros but um, they need to they need to find some better talent they need Troy Parrott to be starting week in week out because who's starting ahead of him? Is this, it can't be um, who was I think? Who, McGoldrick of? no McGoldrick, no, McGoldrick is the Irish he is Irish McGoldrick no I was thinking of the Northern Irish guy he used to be a goalkeeper they moved him up front I can't remember what? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, for Northern Ireland <laughs> <laughs> well they moved a, a goalkeeper up front yeah they play, play him up front I can't remember his name but no, what it's are you not talking it's about? Northern Ireland. He's for Northern Ireland. He's not for Ireland. So what does he play for his club team? Goalkeeper in front, up, up front. front? He's a striker now, but he started <laughs> off as a goalkeeper. Ireland played... Um... Oh, Evan Ferguson did play. He did play? Yeah, he played. And Callum Robinson, they played him, them two up Callum front. Callum Robinson. He was, yeah, he was never even that good in the Premier League. Callum Robinson for Sheffield United, I remember. Uh, wasn't very good either, so... Uh, back in the day, Ireland. Evan Ferguson have, went off after 55 minutes. They used so. to have some great players. Robbie Keane up front, Damien Duff. Like, they used to have a solid team. It's mm. a shame to see them now. Yeah, it is. Uh, next up, let's talk about England under 19s 3, Japan under 19s 2 in a really good game of football. Jamie Donnelly and Will Lankshire uh, following up their goals in the 6 0 win against Romania with another couple of goals in this game. And Jamie Donnelly scoring a last minute winner for England. Uh, so he's carrying that form from the Tottenham under 21s into England. 19s yeah fa absolutely fantastic for him and now i saw um uh windy coy or chris Millon. he was on x he was saying he was quote tweeted donnelly getting the winner he was saying look donnelly's in such a rich vein of form right now maybe that maybe it's, he's like in too good a form for tottenham to ignore kind of thing maybe tottenham should really be using that because sometimes mm. when even a young player you see it with them sometimes like when in such a rich vein of form uh they can just they can do like a even if it's like um 
like a temporary thing. They can maybe overperform even in uh, in on big occasions and in, in the Premier League and stuff. So I think that is something to seriously consider. The form he's in, maybe if you just put him in for one or two games, he might be able to do something special. Yeah, you never look, know. I get that, but I mean, it's a far cry from that from like youth team football to men's football. It's a completely different ball game. No, right? I know that, but he's just in such a he's scoring or assisting every game, literally yeah. every game this season. So. At some point, you have to say, like, is that level too easy for him? Maybe. He needs it seems as though, it does seem as though that, that level's too easy for him. But to, to go from that level to literally the top level of football into the Premier League is a massive jump. You would think, like, the next jump from him is probably to go to, like, League One or the Championship or something like that. But to go from that straight into Premier League football, who knows? if it, We don't know if he's ready for that yet because we just don't see him in training amongst the first team. That's, that's absolutely right. And only the manager can... Uh, make that determination but you've seen it before I remember Rashford came out of nowhere and just you know put him in an Europa League game and he just started mm. scoring True. immediately you just never yeah. know uh, until they get an opportunity I'm not saying like, he should be starting the next game I just think it's something for the management to consider like he's in such a rich vein of form I'll bring him off the bench and see like some can confidence take can take you a long way in mm. this sport it's true it's very true. Um, next up, Sweden 2, Estonia 0, as Sweden have failed to qualify for the Euros. Decky played 90 minutes from the right-hand side of the midfield. One key pass, two out of its six ground jewels, and zero out of five crosses were successful. So not the greatest day for Decky, but Sweden do get um, a 2-0 win and kind of overturn that terrible Azerbaijan loss last week. Mm. But they do fail to qualify for the Euros. Probably the first time they've failed to qualify for a tournament for a while. Yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head, but they always seem to do... They seem to perform okay at tournaments. And they, they don't usually get that far, but they usually always give a good account of themselves. They good. usually get out of the groups, though, don't they? Yeah, they usually, like, give everyone a good game, whoever they play. They never get rolled over in any game. And always when they come up against a big team, it's usually a narrow defeat uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the time. So, shame they're not going to be there. But, look, unfortunately, they haven't done enough to make it through. Yeah, but it should be a good summer of rest for Decky, exactly. that's for sure. Um, actually, they weren't at the World Cup, were they, Sweden? In no, Qatar, they weren't. they weren't. So this is the second tournament in a row that they'll um, be missing out on. <laughs> Having after I've just said they usually qualify for tournaments, but that's two in a row now. Uh, but in terms of what to look forward to tonight, we have mentioned a couple of games already, but we'll go over all of them. Yves Bissouma should be playing in Mali's second World Cup qualifier against the Central African Republic. Kickoff at seven p.m. tonight. Denmark are in action away to Northern Ireland. They are already qualified, so it's a pretty nothing game, but they're playing at 7.45 tonight. Italy playing that massive game against Ukraine tonight. I mean, Vicario should be back in the squad, but we don't know. We, he probably won't play. It'll probably be Donnarumma in goal. And last but not least, England under-20s are away to Germany tonight in the Euro Elite League um, at 5 p.m. kickoff and Alfie Devine and Dane Scarlett in the squad for that. So that should be interesting. Definitely. And tomorrow we have a watch-along for South Korea. Yeah, exactly. We'll so go and out. head out to our South Korean channel. We'll be going live just before 12 o'clock as the kickoff will be 12 p.m. So following Sony and South Korea. So go check that out. The last one was really good as I think they won 5-0 and Sony scored a great goal yes. in it as well. Celebrating every goal and wincing at every challenge exactly <laughs> <laughs> so come and join us for that but that is your international roundup we'll bring you another one tomorrow after all these games are played and we'll look forward to the next day of international football but thank you everyone for joining us today like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on you spurs, spurs.